everyone. Today we are going to read a fable. A fable is an old folk story. You're going to read first to understand the story and second with me to kind of analyze it and see how those pictures are adding um, to the meaning of the story. So we've got the north wind and the sun. Um, I want to also remind you, this is by Aesop, and I wanted to remind you that some living things can be characters that behave like humans. Some of you may remember what that means. That is what? Good personification. So, the north wind and the sun is the story that we're going to read. Let's go ahead and read that. Pause the screen now. Now that you're done reading The Wind and the Sun, let's talk about just a few questions so we can get the understanding. This is kind of like part one of your teacher assigned lesson in iReady. So number one, what are the sun and the, um, the north wind quarreling about? Quarreling, what are they quarreling about? Good. You probably said which of them is stronger. Stronger, And how do they settle the argument? Or the quarrel? They both try to remove the traveler's cloak. And which is stronger, the north wind or the sun and why? Yes, you're right. We know that the sun is stronger because he gets the traveler to remove his cloak. So, um, let's go ahead and read it the second time, and then we're going to go in and analyze it. I went ahead and highlighted two words that you might have highlighted when you read it the first time through that you weren't quite sure what they meant. So, we're going to talk about those. I also want you to keep in mind, um, I want you to um, circle details in the pictures that add to your understanding of the story. So as we're reading the story, I want you to be circling at least one thing in each of the uh, pictures. Paragraph one, the north wind and the sun had a quarrel about which of them was stronger. While they were disputing, a traveler passed, passed along the road wrapped in a cloak. Let us agree, said the sun, that he was stronger who can rip the traveler of his cloak. So we've got this word quarrel up here. And if I look around in my sentences, I'm trying to figure out what quarrel means. The wind and the sun are doing something together. This down here says why they were disputing. I've kind of heard disputing before. That sounds like maybe we disagreed on something. And then as I kept reading, I had cell let us agree, which kind of gives me an antonym of disputing. So I'm going to guess that quarrel means argue or disagree by the context clues. So let's keep reading. Very well, growled the north wind and at once sent a cold howling blast against the traveler. Paragraph four. With the first gust of wind, the ends of the cloak whipped around the traveler's body. But the harder the wind blew, the tighter he held it to him. Then the sun began to shine. At first his beams were gentle, and in the pleasant warmth, after the bitter cold of the north wind, the traveler unfastened his cloak and let it hang loosely from his shoulders. The sun's rays grew warmer and warmer. The man took off the cap and mopped his brow. At last he became so heated that he pulled off his cloak and to escape the blazing sunshine, threw himself down in the welcome shade of the tree by the roadside. So here we have the word bitter and we have to try to figure out what bitter cold means. It's an adjective, it's describing the cold and we know that um, the wind as the one that was in charge of the cold. So if we look back here, we've got the word howling, blast. So the wind is howling and it's blasting. There's a gust 
of when. So bitter must mean strong because I've heard of a gust before when talking about hurricanes during hurricane season. So I thought howling blast gust, bitter must be strong because we've got antonyms such as pleasant and warmth. The sun, the opposite of the wind, was pleasant, warm, warmer, heated, and blazing. These are antonyms of bitter. So I also asked you to circle details in the text. So the first picture... Um, Actually, the first picture is up here. The first picture is of the wind. And you can see that I circled um, the old man's face. Because his face looks like he's going through some pain and discomfort. And we didn't really talk about the pain and discomfort in the text. Here I'm looking at this picture and I see the traveler's face again. This time the traveler's face looks sweaty and he's wiping it from his forehead and he's showing that he is warm. He's kind of slumped uh, under the tree like he's too tired or overheated to move on. So these are the visual details that add to the text that we read. Let's go ahead and put that in a graphic organizer so we can better understand what the author is trying to tell us by using these illustrations, these visual devices. So we have to, actually our question is, what do the pictures contribute to the fable's meaning? So here we go, we're trying to find out author's meaning. We have to complete the chart below by looking for details in the text about how the traveler feels. Then explain what the pictures add to the story. So. Here are the quotes from the text. With the first gust of wind, the ends of the cloak whipped about the traveler's body. But the harder the wind blew, the tighter he held it to him. So that's the actual quote from the text. You can see that there in paragraph four. And the second column is, based on the text, how does the traveler feel? The traveler must feel very cold to pull the cloak around him for warmth. So we're basically just putting in other words what the quote from the text is saying. So what do the pictures add to the meaning? The traveler's face shows pain and discomfort. And here we talked about that. So it looks like it's hard to walk forward because the wind, because the wind is blowing in his face and he is traveling on foot. It looks like he's struggling against the wind. So that's the, the quote from the wind. Let's go ahead and look at the sun's part in this story. The quote is, at last he became so heated that he pulled off his cloak and to escape the blazing sunshine threw himself down in the welcome shade of a tree by the roadside. So we took that text right here from the end of paragraph five. And we have to put that quote into our own words the traveler feels warmer and warmer until he has to take off his cloak and get out of the sun's rays. Remember, he is slumped against a tree, maybe finding shade and wiping that sweat from his brow, his forehead. So if we come back to our chart in the third column, what do the pictures add to the meaning? Well, the traveler wipes sweat from his forehead. So that shows he's very warm. Remember, this text did not tell us that he wipes sweat from his forehead. He has slumped under the tree. The text didn't tell us that because the heat has made him too tired to keep walking. So that brings us to our short response. Here we go in true Miss Vargas fashion. I have written then more than the lines have given us, but it's important that we answer this prompt correctly and completely to the full extent of the standard. So our short response is to analyze what the pictures add to the meaning of the fable. You have to use details from the text and the pictures to support your answer. So here we go. 
Let's go ahead and analyze what the pictures add meaning to the fable by using details from text and picture. Let's go ahead and see if you can pick up on those key words. I turned my question around. Can you pick up those words? The details in the first picture show the traveler must feel very cold as he pulls the cloak around him. With the wind blowing in his face, the traveler holds his hat tightly and his face clearly shows discomfort. It looks as if it's hard to walk forward into the wind. But after the sun warms the traveler, he becomes too hot for his cloak. A detail in the second picture shows sweat running down his face. That he is slumped under a tree suggests the heat has made him tired. Going back to our prompt, we had to analyze what pictures, what the pictures add to the meaning of the fable, details from text and the pictures. So we've talked about the details in the, the first picture, and then we have talked about details in the second picture, mixed in with some details from the text and a little bit of mix of our own words. So. I hope that you guys learned a little bit more about how to analyze visual elements um, to figure out what the author is trying to tell you. Let me know if you have any questions. See you all later. Bye.